Good morning. Good morning. I'm Pastor Maggie, and I'm so happy to be worshiping with all of you today. I would like to welcome all of you who are here, all of you who are watching online, and welcome to worship. Some brief announcements before we begin. There has been a misprint in the bulletin. Under organist, it should instead say pianist, and with us today is Karin Zudema. Welcome, Karin, and thank you for assisting us in worship today. On a sad note, Lane Barr's sister, Thea Heil, suffered a head injury from a horse. Our hearts and prayers go out to Lane, Thea, and their family during this difficult time. We will uplift Thea in our prayers later in the service. I invite you all now to settle in, to allow yourself a chance to breathe, and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, we come to you today knowing we have strayed. We have allowed ourselves to become consumed with earthly desires, busy with schedules and to-do lists, consumed by technology, and exhausted from living in a world of brokenness. Yet we know that you are in the brokenness, that you calm the chaos. Turn us again to you. Provide us with glimmers of hope, love, and peace, so that we can turn to you and rest, so that we can be recharged to share your name throughout our days, and to serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We continue our worship by singing our gathering song. Dearest Jesus, at your word, number 520. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Abiding God, you breathe life into our lungs and hope into our heart. Immerse us in your grace, guide us in your truth, and give us good courage to embrace change. Calm our anxieties and lead us in love to care for all creation through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Genesis 18. The Lord visits Abram and Sarah and tells them that the long-awaited promise of the birth of a child will be fulfilled for them in their old age. The Lord appeared by, to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we will read Psalm 15 responsively. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle, who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue, they do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. And in their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading is from Colossians. This letter offers a mystical teaching that the great mystery of God is Christ in you because Christ is present in the church. Christians share in his life, suffering, and glory. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so, that, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast, in the faith without shifting from the hopes promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am rejoicing in my sufferings 
for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servants according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able to welcome the gospel. gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. During his visit to the home of Mary and Martha, Jesus reminds Martha that her concern for many tasks distracts from the one thing that precedes all else, abiding in the presence of God. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And any children may come forward. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. So have any of you heard the term busy as a bee before? Yeah? What do you think it means to be as busy as a bee? Really busy? Yeah. (laughs) That's very good, Koi. (laughs) What kind of things do you like to do? Play with tractors and play with trains? His, his what set? Oh, match set. That's awesome. What else, what else do you guys like to do to keep you busy? Koi likes to help his mom out. Vinka likes to play video games. Ooh, play piano. That's awesome. Horse chores? Wow, that must keep you very busy, huh? <laughs> How about you? What do you like to do? Vacuum? (laughs) You are brave. You can come over to my house anytime. (laughs) So do you think that bees are always busy? Yes? What do you think about, what what do you think bees do in the winter time? Hibernate. Hibernate, that's a very good guess because a lot of animals do hibernate. Like bears? Well, actually in the winter, Honeybees all gather together in their hive. The queen bee is the biggest bee, and she is in the center of the hive, and all of the other honeybees gather around her. But it's winter time, so it's really cold. So instead of the summer, when their wings are open and they're flying everywhere, their wings are tucked back and still. And the muscles that are attached to their wings start to shiver. Have you guys shivered before? Yeah? Do you know what shivering is supposed to do? What does it help you do? 
warm up, yes. And that's what happens in the hive with the bees. So all of the bees start to shiver together. They shiver and they shiver. And the reason they shiver is because they want to keep the beehive warm for the queen bee. And do you know what? All these thousands of bees shivering inside the hive can keep the queen bee and her honey at 92 degrees warm when there is a really cold blizzard going on outside. And the bees need to do this because it's necessary for their survival. Do you think that they could survive if they decided to go fly around and be busy like a bee in the winter? No. So sometimes maybe we don't need to be busy and we need to return to maybe God's beehive for us and not be as busy as a bee. So how do you spend time with God? Come to church, that's a great Go to Sunday school. Yes, vacation Bible school. Those are all great ways to spend time with God. And another way that we can spend time with God is by praying. So should we say a prayer together? All right, we'll do a repeat after me prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for the times when we are busy and the times when we are having fun. Help us to remember to find time for you, to talk to you, and to feel your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I forgot to share the picture I have of the bees. It's a drawing picture. It's not a real picture, but I'll show you so you can kind of see. The big bee in the middle and all the little bees shivering around to keep the big bee, queen bee warm. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> well, thank you so much. You guys can go back to your seat. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my God, my strength, and my creator. In today's gospel, we heard that Martha was distracted by her many tasks. Now, I'm not sure if you all know this or not, but this past week was my first week here at St. John. So I'm not quite sure if I can relate to the whole Martha being busy and distracted. There are many tasks. Oh wait, I guess I can. <laughs> this week was quite busy. Well then it makes me wonder about all of you here at St. John. All of the tasks that you have been through looking for a new pastor. The countless call committee meetings, church council meetings, congregational meetings, discussions with the synod, interviews, finding supply pastors, stepping up and filling in new roles, opening the church. The list goes on and on and on. Not to mention, each one of you has a personal life filled with a laundry list of things to do. But yet, here you are. You have found time to be here at worship today. Or maybe you're watching the live stream, or perhaps even the recording. And I'm guessing the reason you have chosen to be a part of worship today is because you understand how important it is to set time apart and dwell with God, like the kids told us in the children's sermon today, going to church. Which is something I believe to be of utmost importance, and something that I hope to cultivate with all of you here at St. John. Time for us to dwell together with God. And what that will look like has countless possibilities. But the one underlying factor will be what the gospel pointed out today, that there is need of only one thing. As we heard Jesus say, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, 
There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Now I find it interesting that our Bible translations use the word better, as in Mary has chosen the better part, because it actually doesn't get at the correct meaning of the Greek translation. Because better part implies a dualistic way of thinking, making us English hearers think that we need to choose to be either a Mary or a Martha. However, the correct Greek translation is good, as in Mary has chosen what is good, because we all know that God is good. As we hear echoed all the way back to Genesis, God created and God saw that it was good. God is the source of all life, energy, hope, love, grace, peace, and joy, because God is the source of all things good. And when you were born, God breathed all of that goodness into your lungs. Because God knew that life is filled with chaos, disruptions, to-do lists, schedules, agendas, work, and so much more. So God gave us our breath to guide us into every moment that we are on this earth. There is an image that I love that you received on your way in today to church. It is a set of lungs that are made out of sticks and flowers. And there is even a pretty little butterfly next to them. At the bottom of the lungs, you will see the letters YH and WH. These letters represent the original Hebrew word for God. All the way back when Moses dared to ask God, what is your name? Now I promise not to talk about Greek and Hebrew in every sermon, But for this particular gospel today, I think it helps us make sense out of what Jesus is getting at. So please bear with me. As you can see, this name for God is not really a word, as we think of words today, mainly because it is unpronounceable, which is why our Bible translations use Yahweh, adding unnecessary vowels so that we can say the name of God. But scholars have learned that these original letters were not meant to be a word, but instead to represent breathing sounds. So when you breathe in, it sounds like the YH. And when you breathe out, it sounds like the WH. Go ahead, allow yourselves a couple of deep breaths and listen. Therefore, every breath you take is speaking God's name. Because God is always with you in every breath and in every moment. And when the time comes for us to breathe our last breath, the last thing we do is exhale, not inhale. Which means that our last breath is released into the world and becomes united with all creation, with the creator, and with all life. Meaning every last breath is never lost, just as our loved ones are never lost. For they are united in Christ's last breath, and they are welcomed into a new breath of God, however that may look in the mystery of God. So if you find yourself in mourning of a lost loved one, know that in your breath, you not only speak God's name, but you hold their last breath with yours, because they are a part of God, and God is a part of you, and we are together one in Christ. Christ, the one who told Martha to not be distracted, but instead to allow herself time to dwell with God and to let the word of God seep into her very being. Because the word of God never leaves us, it becomes a part of us. 
meaning the word of God informs our actions when we are distracted and truly busy. Therefore, the more time we spend dwelling with God, whether in silent prayer, going to church, listening to scripture, reading scripture, gardening, running, meditating, or however it is that you choose to spend time with God, that is your time with God. The more opportunities you will have to welcome God's transformative goodness. Like a caterpillar into a butterfly, God is continually transforming you, breathing life into you, and calling you to be who God made you to be. So while this next week will offer its many distractions and a laundry list of things to do, remember you always have your breath to return to. Or when the world gets heavy, frustrating, or overwhelming, return to your breath and dwell in God's presence. Because the more opportunities you allow yourself to dwell with God, the more you will be able to be filled with God's peace, love, and joy. Yet, we all know Life is not always that simple. And that from time to time will become the frustrated Martha. So please don't be hard on yourself because there is time also to be merry. Because God is always there to provide you space to rest, recharge, and be. Just like we heard at the beginning of worship today, be still and know that I am God. Amen. I now invite you to sing the hymn of the day, Christ Be Our Light, number 715.
Please stand as you are able to confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. Creator God, in the beginning you created, and you saw that all of your creation was good. We give you thanks for your creative action and for all life, from tiny bioluminescent algae to giant stars. We give you thanks for the light and energy they produce and also for the darkness that allows them to shine. May their glow radiate throughout our beings so that we can shine forth in a world of brokenness and hurt, bringing your word and your light to all in need. God of grace, hear our prayer. Living God, we give you thanks for summer harvests and for the farmers who have made them possible. Continue to nourish the plants that grow with proper light, with rain and nutrients. Continue to provide the earth with healthy crops so that someday no people will know hunger. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all wars, conflicts, and countries facing political instability. We ask that you guide leaders, officials, and those in charge to move forward and find peace. We pray for an end to violence, for mercy, hope, and grace. Inspire people to find your will. Bring about justice and peace to all the earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. Abiding God, you remind us of the importance of dwelling with you in today's gospel. May we find gentle reminders of this each day, even if it is simply to breathe your name and dwell in your presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Healing God, we pray for all who are sick and in need of your care. In places where there are doctors and nurses, we ask that you continue to guide them and help them properly care for those who can heal and recover. We ask that you provide their families with patience, comfort and peace as they endure this time alongside their loved ones. Today we especially lift up Kathy Reisman, Pat Plunkett, Robin Hine, Thea Heil, and Florian Colby. May your healing spirit reach them all where it is needed and bring them into the fullness of life you desire for each of them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember our loved ones who are no longer of this earth and have joined you in the great cloud of witnesses. We give you thanks for their breath as we hold them with ours. Today we especially remember Lane Barr's Uncle John and family as they mourn the loss of John. May you continue to be with John's family during this time and a comforting presence at the funeral today. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, be with all the people of St. John and meet each one of them where they are at. Today we especially lift up this week's prayer ministry. Dale Knapp, Deb Malley, Zachary Sulin, Leslie Ugaritz, Kate Young, Al Tesh, Gwen Cooley, Tanya Fitzke, Jack Sari, Braden Melander, Isaac Olke, and Amelia Grunenberg. Provide them and all of us the fruits of the Spirit, fitting each individual need. Embrace us in your love so that we may share that love in the many ways that we interact in the world. Guide our hearts and minds to your will and to live into the call you have set forth for each of us. God of grace, 
hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these prayers spoken and those that dwell in our hearts to you, our Savior and Lord, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I welcome you to share the peace, however is comfortable for you to do so. may be seated. <laughs> I now welcome the ushers forward for the offering. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world's signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Uh, before we begin communion, does anybody need a prepackage that would prefer instead of coming up? Just raise your hand and the usher will bring it around to you. Then please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life, and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you who are wanting to take the pre-packaged communion, I now invite you to open and grab the wafer. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. And now you can open the juice side. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you wishing to partake in continuous communion, we will start off today on this side. If you wish to receive the elements, please place your hands out, and if not, then I will know to give you a blessing. I will invite the ushers forward. Come, for all is now ready. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now for the announcements. I see there is a warm welcome from all of you to me in the announcements section. Thank you. <laughs> I would also like to say thank you for all of your kindness, the office flowers. It was just so nice to walk in there with the cute little flowers in the cup and stuff. So thank you so much. It's been a really wonderful week and I just look forward to getting to know all of you more. Uh, there is still help needed for fellowship. There is a sign up sheet on the bulletin board outside of the kitchen if you are able to help. Maine Elementary School is in need of perennial flowers. If you're willing to donate some, contact Kim Landwehr, whose contact information is printed in your bulletin. And lastly, there is a Cemetery Associating Association meeting today after the worship service. Are there any other announcements? All right, then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes, the love of God be reflected in your hands, the wisdom of God be reflected in your words, and the knowledge of God flow from your heart. In the name of the Creator, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now sing our closing hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me, number 798.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.